You have to find a way to make sure that you can try to keep it fresh when you're on a hit. Enjoy the ride because you may never get it again. And don't, you know, ever knock it. I was just that kid from Queens, you know. I was, I was a doorman, then I was an actor. You know, I've lived a lot of different lives. I've, I've lived a few, you know, I've been on, I've been on both sides of the coin. Yeah. So I, I get it, I understand. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the FYI Podcast. This is your host, Paul Tully. This is Finding Your Inspiration, where we find it and we follow it. Today, we got an exceptional guest. I'm really excited. Somebody I've been a fan of, you know, for many years. We got Nick Turturro in the house. Nick, how you doing? All right, Paul. Thank good, you for doing this. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you for doing this. Uh, uh, I, I had the pleasure of working with Nick uh, on my film, Replica, that I wrote and directed. Nick did an incredible job in it. So uh, let's start where you're from, you know, where uh, you grew up. I'm from Rosedale, Queens. Uh, it's at the end of Queens. It's almost Long Island. It's on the borderline. I grew up like in a neighborhood where, and I was very well liked. People really took to me or whatever. I was always been a people person, but I had a lot of friends, you know, I mean, at Louie on the corner, Tommy down the street, Anthony over there. It was just a great, a great way to grow up. You know, we didn't have a lot of money, but we were rich. In a lot of other ways, we were rich in, in ways where, you know, I had a family that was also very you know, creative and artistic, too eccentric. Even though my father was in construction, my mother was a, was a very smart person, very creative person. Mm. And uh, my brother Ralph played sax, and then my brother John did, used to do impersonations. So we, um, and we loved movies, we loved performing, you know, we would perform for my uncles. And I used to sing. They thought, like, when I was a kid, they thought I was going to be, like, a singer. So I, I'm a I'm pretty good crooner-type singer. <laughs> yeah, uh, like a little a ballad, Sinatra. A little yeah. Sinatra, Billy Joel, stuff like that. So um, you never, never knew, like, we were going to be in the movies. I never knew, what, like... But in a lot of ways, our lives were so dramatic, and, and, and the movies was always, a, like, a big release. And I grew up in the 70s where... The amount of movies that were great, I mean, the greats of the greats. Yeah. When you think about the 70s, right? Yeah. You, you think about The Godfather, you think about Taxi Driver, right. you think about Rocky, you think about The Exorcist, you think about French Connection. I mean, I'm a movie buff. Yeah, these classics. So these are classics. Right. I mean, you go on and on about the great movies, the Mean Streets, Dog Day Afternoon, Serpico. Um, so I loved movies. I had good taste. My yeah. brother had good taste. My brother was always a good influence on me. But um, so I think we we had we, 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 we good music, good movies, good food. We grew up at a time where it was a different world. This yeah. is not the same world. It's Phew. not even close to the world. Right. Even when I first came out to L.A. 20 years ago, 20 something years, L.A. was a lot different. I came out here. I was on a TV show. I mean, I, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if I'd be here a year. Then I almost got killed in an earthquake, 94. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Did it hit you hard? Because you uh, were really in the hard. Yeah, I was in oh, Sherman Oaks. Wow, wow. I yeah. almost, I almost, I thought I was going to die because really? I thought the building was coming down. <laughs> but that's another story. So you know, I survived it. But so I would say, you know, I had a great, I had a, a very, very good childhood. My father was a kind of a tough guy, but I was the last kid. I was able to tickle him. My brother always said, I think he really enjoyed you. He, you knew how to tell him stories. You knew how to make him laugh. You knew how to like entertain him. And I grew up a very a nervous kid. Yeah, I, had yeah, a, yeah. I was a very nervous kid. I mean, you know, I uh, was tied to my chair <laughs> in the first grade. Right. <laughs> Crazy story. I guess my mother's not around, so I could always talk about it. I talked about it years ago on Conan. It was, I used to run out of the school, and, and it happened for a long time And in the first grade. And then my father decided to break me, my oldest brother, you know, and the teachers allowed him to come into the classroom with a rope, and they were like, get him. And Get out of here. Yeah. He tied you in the chair tied in class. In the chair. In the classroom. <laughs> in front of kids. Imagine how, how you know, terrifying <laughs> that was. Yeah, and humiliating. Then I came home that day. Everybody was cheering. <laughs> he stayed. He stayed. You know. I, I, lay, I led a very, I think, you know, eclectic kind of, I mean, in a lot of ways, maybe that's why I am creative. Maybe that's why I always felt like, not that I feel better than anybody, but I always felt like I was different. Like, I always felt like, you know, yeah, kids liked me, everything like that. But I always knew there was something different about me versus even like when I was in school, they'd say, hey, Nick, do this. And then I would just do it, you know, and people would be like, you know, I don't know. There was always something. It was always a bit of a performer in me. 
But I also was like, kind of like, not the most, you know, I wasn't the class clown, but I knew how to, I knew how to like turn it on and off. And yeah. um, I loved sports, but I think ultimately I liked, I liked being creative on some level. I didn't know it was going to lend, whether it was music or acting or, or whatever it might be. I just, right. I knew there was something out there for me that was, you know, more than just the norm. I, I just, I just knew I wasn't, you know, I wasn't going to be a brainiac. I wasn't, a, I struggled in school and um, I, I just, I mean, sports, I was a good athlete, but I wasn't great. Mm. You know, I mean, I love baseball. I was a good basketball player, but I didn't grow. So You were a great football player in the longest yard, that's for sure. Yeah, and it's funny, like my <laughs> least favorite sport in this <laughs> And I'm like, you know, football community loves me. Like, I wish, like, I wish football was my favorite sport because baseball, like, <laughs> you I'm love a baseball. big base. I love yeah, baseball. No, you're and, like and, the and biggest they, Yankee yeah, fan. I know. And they known let, the man. They let me do things, but they won't like. <laughs> they won't make a spot for me in baseball. I think they're, it's too conservative for me. They they look at me as like I'm wild and dangerous and I'm like I'm not dangerous at all right. there's nothing dangerous I'm just very they don't know what you may do yeah, at any moment you know, wow. so you know here I am like I'm a kid that had all these you know, I used to watch Reggie Jackson Thurman months and now fast forward years later I'm in the movies I'm known by everybody because of movies television it seems like everybody knows me so it seems like as far as fame goes as far as my name on the street it's kind of crazy I'm like I'm really I guess because I've been around for a long time and I've been in a lot of things and I've been on television a lot and then I've been in a few big movies. So I, um, I definitely uh, have uh, a presence on the street. Like in a lot of ways you even did in this small role I had as Crystal Bob, you just kind of let me go. Right. Now, for, I wish he was a little more to do, but sure. you know, when, I'm, when somebody champions that and then they support it and then they let you go, you never know what it could be. Like even, with, you know, Long as Shard, on paper, it was nothing, and then Adam Sandler just kept adding lines for me. He was like, <laughs> so, kept adding. So great. Yeah, he, right? I mean, so I guess, iconic. I guess he saw that. <laughs> he was like, dude, you're funny. You could be so, f you you really are funny. And I was like, you know, I almost had a couple of TV shows a few years, a couple of times, like years ago, I missed by a hair. I think comically, that could have changed a lot for me. Just did these pilots, these development deals, and it's a shame that they didn't get on the air, because then like, People never seen it, you know, and, and yeah. then, you know, could have changed, uh, you know, but it's not over yet, you know, so I mean, it's still, I still got some, I still got some gas in the tank, so I feel like there's a great comedy out there for me, I mean, a good comedy, uh, hopefully television wise, I mean, like, I mean, I like doing the movies too, but I'd like to do something, and I just did this sitcom, it's, it was a high to be on stage again, and, yeah. and they wrote it for me, and it was nerve wracking too, because I was like, oh shoot, I gotta... I better, I better be on my game because, you know, they'll let you retake it, but still, there's an audience there. Right. And when you're coming in for one or two scenes, they're expecting me to, like, hit a home run. Hit it, nail it, and yeah. Yes. Yeah, They're absolutely. expecting, you know, like, even you, you brought me in for a day. I had to come in blazing. I had to yeah. come in. I have to come, I, and those are not always the easiest things to do. And which you did. You know, I, I want to go back in a minute, but I, before I go back, I want to say something. I want to say, like, even sitting with you talking here, Nick, it's, um, what's fascinating is, and, and this is no, no fluff, but what's fascinating is when you sit with somebody, you, you know, you have a different level. There's a different caliber. And I knew that when you got on set. I, I knew that from your body of work and from being a fan and seeing your work all the way from the Spike Lee films. You know, I yeah. grew up on these films. That's why it all so, started it all started i grew up yeah. with these films you know yeah. from the you know better blues jungle my, fever Mo Better blues then jungle fever was my coming out party yeah and i mean mm. i so i it was having you do my film was already an honor but it's also it was easy for me to trust because the caliber you're bringing the intellectual like you're talking about your father right now and what you're talking about is the whole meisner activity right like checking that it's, it's like already in you and some people have that some people are working to get there. you you have it so it's easy to trust you and to collaborate and, and trust my words with you but before before even talk about that for my listeners because a lot of my listeners are not in hollywood they're not actors they're people living you know in national core which is affordable living uh um houses throughout the country so i want to uh 
somebody at home that's listening and a lot of this sounds foreign to them like being in a movie is not even in their radar right which i'm sure you were there at one time like you sure. said growing up you never yeah. thought that you'd be in the movies when was it that you found your inspiration um and was it that to be in the pictures and how did you go from point a to point b was it a lucky break was it something you pursued um, um i i think you know early on i had done a little in high school i was in a play I was a senior I was in a musical guys and dolls and i loved it i loved being i was thinking oh wow maybe broadway this that um and then when i was young i was in oliver twist and then i had sang so I was thinking musical theater, maybe maybe that's the ticket. I wasn't just thinking, okay, I want to be in cinema, I want to be an actor. But I knew, like I said, I wanted to perform, I wanted to create. Um, and then I think, you know, watching my brother in college, I think I wa I'd never seen like him in, on working on the screen. I was behind the counter. And my mother said, the look on my face watching him was you were so excited to watch him. And she said something to me about that. And then I was a theater major, I had quit. That's another story, I didn't, you know, like running around in tights. I wasn't like this hooty tooty kid. But I think watching my brother, I saw it a little bit. And then when he was doing Do the Right Thing, everybody knew I had a lot of talent. I didn't finish college, had a kid young, this, that. So I got sidetracked. I never, I never really followed through on it. But they all knew I had like some natural ability. But then when I saw like Do the, I was down there, and I was watching it, I was like, wow, I was digging the whole vibe that day. It was so hot as hell. Yeah. I was watching him and Danny, him and him going at it. I mean, I didn't even know the Spike Lee dude. I didn't yeah. know. Anyway, um, so happens I told my brother, you know, maybe I could be an extra one. He goes, well, you, he goes, maybe I could have got you a little part. I didn't know you were, I didn't know nothing. I just, something came over me about Spike and, and, and the whole the whole persona of watching this in bed style right. hit me. Next right. thing I know, he goes, yeah, you know, the, they could use you as a cop one week. So I took a whole week off. Took a week off and then everything was canceled because the rain, rain. Finally, on a Friday night, we shot. I'm in the pizza, by the pizzeria as a cop. You know, tons of people. Spike was walking around. I didn't know the dude. And he was, <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. supposed to come back on a Monday. He was like, what happened to your brother? <laughs> I had to go back to work. I was like, I was waiting all week, 50 bucks. But I had a good time doing it. He goes, no, Spike asked for you. I said, oh, yeah. I think nothing of it. But because of how I felt, because I wanted to be an extra or just be in the movie, something happened where he goes, he was always looking at people, always, you know, I don't know. He didn't even, he didn't upgrade me, upgraded somebody. But he goes, I like this look. Because Spike was always like on the lookout for, like, you know, he hired Rosie Perez. Yeah, people not, that were real natural, people. Real, real people. So he, yeah. he liked the look of something. And then he called me out of the blue that winter. This was a life changing thing. Life changing. Yeah, changing. life changing. I went back. New. I found something. I said, now I got to pursue it. Now I got to get serious about it. You know, get an agent, do this, do that. Yeah. Even though the doorman thing just became secondary. Next thing you know, Spike gave me another try, a bigger thing. And then next thing you know, I got, I, I, I did a, a movie of the week. Or I got an agent. I got little by little. Wow. So in a short span of time, over a couple of years, I started building like a resume. I did a pilot one year, a sitcom. Wow. I, got, I got flown out to L.A., man. I almost like went to the bathroom in my <laughs> pants. I was a nervous wreck. And, uh, you know, and, I, and, and so like little by little, I knew I was building my way up. Like, I, cause they were like, you're doing really, I remember one time Matt Dillon stopped me on the door and he was like, what are you doing out here? He goes, I just saw you in, in a movie, you were good. I said, yeah, I said, I'm working towards it. I said, you know, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not there yet, but I'm, I knew. You were a doorman at I was the still time. a doorman. Wow, but, well, but Matt Dillon seen you yeah, in the Yeah, he saw film. me in Jungle Field, or he wow. saw me in something. Wow. And he was like, cause I used to say hi to everybody. I was on Central Park South. So I was like a star on that block. I love that. You're still working. And then I was still working. <laughs> yeah, because like they had a picture of me in Newsweek when Jungle came out. And, the, uh, and my friend was like, man, you're my hero. You're in, you're in Newsweek and here you are. With, <laughs> get the hat on your head. That's so I didn't, I didn't like, you know, pack up the ranch and just like, <laughs> right. I was waiting for like the right, the right break, the right sure. thing. And then so that pilot didn't happen, the sitcom. Then a year later... I almost did get an audition for that show because they wanted to just see Hispanic kids or something. And then we, they fought hard for me to get an audition for this new cop show. I, I knew nothing about these guys, Bochco. Had no idea it was going to be that huge. All I know is the guy fought hard for me to get, you know, just in the room. Wow. And then 
I was on a break with my doorman pants. I threw a sweater on, went up to the Gulf and Western building, and they were like all in there. Like this guy is Steve Bochco, Dave Milch, all these giants of TV. Wow. And I just, you know, I didn't think that much of it at the time and had a few lines. You know, I was just playing like a young cop. You know, they had seen some of the footage, so they liked what they saw. And I was like, I didn't have a lot to say, but whatever I did, I made, I guess I made a lot out of it. I was like, yeah, I'm up for that. Hands up. You know, I was like, <laughs> I was just like a few lines. I was just playing it like, I hadn't played cops and stuff. So I, was, I, I was young and I looked even way younger. So I just played it like this kind of like Boy Scout. Like I got sick that winter. I had to take a leave of absence. I had really bad, like I was not well physically. I was so thin. And then finally they gave me the part. And, but I didn't know it was going to be like a life-changing job, you know. Yeah. It was like 7 out of 13 episodes. Money was like really, really low. But I was like, ah, hey, you know what? It's time to like hang up my doorman. I'll, I'll, um, I'll resign and I'll give this acting thing a full chance. And I did. And then the rest, you know, the rest is history. I mean, I didn't, I, listen, they could have got rid of me in the first 7 or 13 if they didn't like the character. Yeah. But I just went out there and said, well, this is an opportunity. This is what I'm building up towards anyway. I mean, I can't be afraid about a job or this or that, whatever. I was there 10, 11 years. Enough is enough. Right. I mean, right. I, I wanted to be a full-time actor. Yeah. And then you found and what then, you loved. And, and then I found, I did it because I loved doing it. And, you know, and then I wound up on a show that was critically acclaimed and the show got Emmy nominated. I got Emmy nominated. I was like, and I that went six seasons. But oh, you no, were on. I was on almost six and a half. It went twelve. It went twelve, but you were six and a half. Yeah, seasons. I mean, I was there in the in the in the potent potent years, you know. Did fame? Did fame? Uh, how did it hit you? How'd you deal with it? Did you walk with it good, or did it? Are there any times think, where you? I it think really I walked with you. I mean, I think I, I think I walked with it pretty good. I think I, uh, I think because I had been a doorman. And I had been on the other side, and I think I was serving people, and you know, for ten years, and I and I dealt with, you know, I, Billy Joel lived in my hotel. We became friends, and nice. there were other celebrities that liked me. Uh, I think uh, for some reason that when I crossed over and I went from being a server to being the other guy, um, I, I I think I wore it pretty well. I, I you know I was definitely a little bit smitten by it and a little seduced by some of it. Sure. Um, um, I, could, I don't think I quite knew, understood what it was all. Even my brother goes, I don't think you knew like the pitfalls and, and some mm. traps and some things. I mean, I, but I think overall, I tried to share it with people that I always wanted to embrace everybody and share my, you know, I wanted to share my success with people. So, and then I hit the talk show, show circuit and somehow, some way, my agent had a really like great agent, got me on like some big shows, even though I was not the lead or even close. You know, they were like, how did you get on Letterman? And then Letterman saw I was funny. And like, they never even let me be funny on that show. I was just a straight guy, a Boy Scout. I mean, yeah, it's a nice yeah. character. Yeah, In yeah. a lot of ways, way different than me, James yeah. Martinez. So so the, the whole circuit with, with uh, Letterman and talk show hosts must have been wild. Yeah, that was wild. I mean, it was really like, you know, I mean, started out. I mean, Letterman wasn't the first. I think it might have been Conan O'Brien. Or maybe even before nice. that, it was like I think Arsenio. Oh, I did Arsenio. Yes. I did. Uh, I did Queen Latifah. <laughs> I did like I, I worked my way up. What's happening to you in that moment? Because I, I I'm going to be honest with you. Check this out, Nick. I had that moment right now driving here. I was passing Hollywood Boulevard, and in the '90s, Replica is based off my years in the '90s living in Hollywood. I was not the guy I am today, right? I was doing some bad things, and my life was I never imagined. So coming here tonight. It hit me like this, this nostalgia. It was like, wow, man. I seen Hollywood Boulevard. We used to live in an apartment off Hollywood Boulevard in Edgemont. It was like crazy in the night. And I thought, wow, who would have thought today, 25 years later, I'm sober, I'm doing, you know, directed my first film I wrote. Right. Did this podcast, and I'm going to Nick Turtles. Like, Tur that's a big deal for me because I, I grew up watching you and yeah. watch, like I said, Spike Lee movies. And so, anyways, I'm having that moment, right? now like sitting with you what was it like that you're like man i'm going on letterman like you used to watch him as a doorman do you never thought you'd be sitting across from him no what was that like, no, like was, what's was, happening in you it was uh in fact they, they they shot a spoof one time the first time i did let him i said yeah i met you years ago you were, they were shooting something there was an irish doorman with a cherry nose and and he gave the guy a quarter and he didn't look at me or anything he was like a real you know, nerdy looking guy and they did this like they used to go out in the field and do these funny bits and Letterman was there, and I was like, I was wishing I was in it, but I was like right there. But he, 
the, you know, the other doorman looked funny and all this stuff. So I brought it up to him. I said, he goes, yeah, we met. I go, yeah, you gave the guy a quarter. He started laughing right wow. away. You know, so I was like, I, I, I don't even know. Like, I, I think because I was in it and I was living it. Um, it's different when, for years ago, before when I used to fantasize in my room, my brother wrote about it one time, that Nick is stuck in his dreams. Nick is always like fantasizing about his dreams. And yeah, I was kind of a dreamer and playing Billy Joel in my room. But the difference was when I crossed over and I started doing it and I started living it, I just dove in. Mm. I dove in and then I I lived it. I soaked it up. I, 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 I was a sponge. I was a fast learner. But... I, I can't say I didn't enjoy it. I did. I mean, when looking back on it, I'm like, wow. I mean, all kinds of people were coming around and attention. I was I was kind of a cute kid. You know, I mean, I had been married previously. That wasn't great. You know, I was young. This and that. You know, then there was all kinds of chicks coming around, girls. So I didn't know. And then, you know, fair, then I meet my, my future wife on a plane. She was a flight attendant. She was, there was something about her. And then... You know, we, we kind of had the long distance. We started seeing each other. And then, you know, she wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I didn't, like, commit right away. Um, but then it hit me where, you know, one time we had a little hiccup. And I was like, maybe a month we were away. And then I was like, you know what? I I, I, I don't want I don't want no one else to. I don't want to see you her. You were going with crazy. You yeah, were I was like, I miss Thinking of who like, she could be yeah, with, yeah, driving yeah, you yeah, insane. Cause, cause I, I, because yeah, because, you know, she had flown around. And, you know, yeah. it was... There was things in my head, and I was like, you know what? I, I don't want her to be with anybody. I, I don't want anyone else to have her but me. Mm. I, I said, because I felt that way about her. I, I, it took me a little while to kind of, because I was kind of, you know, she was asking me, like, well, what do you want to do? You want to, because I could tell she really, she really liked me or she loved me. I mean, she, I think she was crazy about me, too. Huh. I think she wanted to be with me. I, it was, it wasn't like, it was totally organic. There was nothing. You know, it was a beautiful thing, and I, and I, uh, I miss that kind of feeling too. I mean, sometimes I complain to her about things, and like, because you get old to have kids, this, that. You know, it's just like the romance. Mm. I mean, it's, you know, I'm still like, you know, I'm still madly in love with her. Yeah. But I, I, I miss that. I miss that kind of like, you know, like I was away recently. You know, I was just when we were together, we were away a lot. I was away in Pennsylvania doing something, and then, and then she was with me, but then she came back, and then when I came home, she like, she actually missed me. And I was like, wow, you missed me, you know, and I was like, and she was like, I said, well, how did that happen? I knew it wasn't going to last, you know, I just thought that, I mean, it missed me in a different way, like, you sure. missed, like in, in the old days, you know, yeah, she yeah. was like, I don't know, it's just a feeling. I was like, I wish that feeling could come more often. <laughs> you know, it was just, a, it, that, that, it was that, it was that connection. Yeah. That I, yeah. that I, you know. Yeah, I guess that's the magic thing. How do you keep that that spark going? After Very, how long you've been married? Twenty seven years. Twenty seven years. Very hard. Congratulations. Very hard. Thank yeah. you. But after you've been through, you know, kids and this and that, and I have a beautiful grandson. Um, yeah. That this is not always the easiest situation, um, but we, we kind of adore this little boy. It's like you know, I fell in love all over again with this little kid, and I'm like, I really like. He's just. You know, we we love him. We love him like he's almost our own kid. And but I don't want to go into the whole situation. It's just been a difficult, painful kind of thing. Um, yeah. But we love him so much, and it's he's he brings so much joy. You know. But you're right. It's like how do you, how do you kind of like, and how do you say that to your partner without them getting mad at you, getting right. resent? You know, like you know, and that's the thing about like life. It's like you know, you see people together for like a thousand years, but there's no passion. There's no mm. real like. I don't. I don't want just that. I, I, I with with her. I want. I want that whole. You know, and then sometimes you know you got to go. Well, you're not. Uh, you're not always the easiest. You're not always nice. You're not always this. You know. You know. Maybe I contributed to it, or mm. maybe people just change. Right. People change. You right. know. It's like. I'm like, but I remember those days. You know. It's like I remember my childhood. I remember when I first met her. Yeah. And it's like, bam, twenty five years, bam. It's like almost over. No, because it's like, yeah, it, it's getting there. It's like, you know, it's like, wow, it went so fast. My father used to tell me, yeah. life goes so fast. So that's why I say, you know, like, you know, live it. I lived it. I can't say I didn't live it. I lived it. But, man, it does go fast. And it does, like, it does make you um, be nostalgic. It does make you think about things. It does make you miss that feeling of freshness, the feeling of being on a show, like, yeah. like how fresh it felt, meeting her, how fresh it felt. 
I think the 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 the, the, the key to reinventing ourselves is constantly trying new Something avenue. New. A lot Something of times fresh. I notice, especially actors, right. us, we stick to this till we yeah. die. Yeah, we get and stale. And it's like I'm we a director, stale. and it's like you we ain't directed stale. nothing in 50 years. I know. We get stale, yeah. and it's like what is Change what more up. in the world Change is there that Nick Keep it is going to? Yes, right. Could be what? fitness. Could be opening a gym. Could be opening a muffin shop. Could be I don't know what it is. Whatever it is. Could reinvent Whatever the whole it is. It could energy. be, you know, like, you know, me reviving my sauce. Or, you know, I've been watching all these pizza, pizza things, pizza review things. And I'm like, why didn't I do that? Now I've been thinking about this other show that, like, looking for Italians around America. Because I was in this blown off place. And I'm like, I found, like, all these Italians. And I'm thinking, there's Italians everywhere. Not just in the typical places. That'd be fr- freaking wild. Me, you know, searching in all kinds of weird areas. Like, where are these Italians? Right. You know, I'm talking about in America, like never that. mind Italy. Right. And I'm thinking about this could be a really good show on an RV. Nick Turtle pulls in. I'm in Tamaqua. I'm in whoever. I'm in Houdini. And I'm like, there's Italians here? Yeah. Where, when did they start? Where are they? Where's yeah, the pizza place? Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, I'm thinking like 10 episodes. Yeah, this, absolutely. It could be entertaining and it could be also informative and fun. And, and culturally, and culturally you got to build it. In, it's but, yeah, culture. And people know me everywhere. Absolutely. They're like, Nick Turtle, what are you doing here? Right. What, are you, what are you doing in this? I'm like, right. I'm here. Ohio, I'm, I'm, so. I'm looking for somewhere in Ohio, somewhere in Pennsylvania, somewhere in Indiana. I'm like, you right. tell me there's a tiny community I'm going to look for. Right. I think it's a good idea. And I, cause, I, cause I'm like, I've been thinking about this stuff. And then I was like, when I ran into all these Italians in the middle of nowhere, I was like, what the hell? I said, I, that there's Italians here? This is a hillbilly place, you know, Trump yeah. place. And I was like, wow. I, mean, I never figured, you know, there's going to be paisans here. Right. You know, it's not like right. just the typical areas in Brooklyn. Right. And New York, Jersey. New right. Jersey. I mean, no, they, around this whole country. Not only that, they helped build this they country. They built it. We built they it. Built, our, we built yeah, it. Absolutely. Italians, we're not just in the mafia. Right. You know what I mean? That, right. That's a small percentage. Correct. So I, I really think that would be... A fun show, and it, it would be not only fun, it would be entertaining, but it would be exciting for me to do something like that, too. Yeah. Something outside the box. You know, and that acting is like, unless it's a great, great, it's not the only high. You know, I'm looking for that high again, you know, right. like even, like I tell you, like even at home sometimes, it's like, I, I want that, like, hey, let's just like, let's pretend we don't know each other. Right. Whatever. <laughs> you know. We can bump, yeah. bump into each other. Yeah. Maybe you're watering the lawn. You know, just, I don't know. Just, just, She's jogging by. Let's, let's spice it up. Yeah, a little you know, like, right I'll, I'll bring you up. You trip. I pick I know. you up. Let me I know. clean your knee I told her out. the other day, like I said, one right. time, we were, you were at, I used to go meet her at the health and she was in a jacuzzi and she goes, get in here. I go, you remember when you said get in here? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, yeah, and I, she remembers everything. I was right. like, you're wearing a, I'm wearing a purple bikini. Purple. I was like, yeah, yeah. I said, but you, like, you were like, get in here. I want you in here. And there's yeah. glasses on. I was like, yeah, that was, that was, you know, it's nice to be wanted. Nice yeah. to be like, you know, it's that, like, that, you know, there's nothing wrong with wanting, wanting that. You know what I mean? Because life, man, it becomes like you say, because even being on a TV show after a few years, it got, it gets, it felt like work. It felt like a job. It felt like it had lost that feeling of the beginning. I wanted to ask early, you that. There's, you know, For the young actors that are watching that are dreaming to be series right. regulars. And That's all of us. No, listen, no, and don't knock it. It's great. Don't knock it. But you have to find a way to make sure that you can try to keep it fresh when you're on a hit. Enjoy the ride because you may never get it again. And don't, you know, ever knock it. But there will come times, there will come a period where it will become very, like, mechanical. It will become very, like, you're on autopilot. And I've done this for a long time. I did it really, uh, really, really well. And so then it kind of loses that, um, unless maybe you're doing, like, a comedy. Because the comedies, I think, if you can keep that writing going, yeah. you laugh a lot. But I think, like, with dramas, it gets, it gets heavy. It gets yeah. this, it gets that, it gets... It's it's a little depressing. I'd imagine it's yeah. like being rich. It's like you're never going to give the when people say being rich is and everything, but then you go, look, I'm not saying I'm going to give the money back. It hell, it's like being a series regular is fantastic, and you wouldn't trade it. But I know what you mean. It's not everything. It's cracked up to be all the time. No, it, you know, you, we all want that hit, but then it's like, you know, well, how long do you do you want it to be? Because you don't always want to do something for the rest of your life. You know, it's like yeah. that's what's great about a movie because you do a movie. And it's over, then the next movie, you never know. One's good, one's bad. But it's, it's fresh, it's exciting, it's yeah. new. You know, whether it's good or bad, you know, you, you at least feel like, wow, this is new. This, yeah. this is not the same. Right. You know, and, and um, 
And that's what's that's that's the thing to keep things to keep it exciting to keep it you know like the Yankees just brought up a bunch of kids all of a sudden they got life into the team it was a bad year bad year but the kids now have brought a new energy it looks like a different team it feels like a different team because it is a different team yeah you know and yeah. that's what you have to do you have to you have to find a way to keep keep I don't know you know what I'm saying just keep like you say reinventing, reinventing. the wheel and I mean you know listen I like to stay young yeah I like when people flatter me and tell me man you don't look your age right you right. look good you still look you know you look this you look that you know you still feel you're sexy yeah. and um, <laughs> you know I, I like that you know you, you gotta you gotta love you gotta feel you're sexy you gotta feel you 100% you know, I mean that's why I like clothes I, I, I like you know I'm, I'm very fashionable I like I put, you know, things that that get me going, excite me. You know, I love shopping. I'm like worse than a woman. I love to shop. It's my therapy. <laughs> right. I just, I feel good shopping. I don't know what it is. And men are like, you know, bored. I'm like, not me. You know, <laughs> I won't even buy, you know, I like to buy shop for women. You like to enjoy you know, yourself. I like to enjoy myself. I love pizza. I like all kinds of pizza. But I mean, you know, pizza is my thing. The, the great, I like the show. Listen, I want to say this. So you've done what less than 1% of people in the business in Hollywood are able to achieve. So right. so that's incredible. Not only have you done that, you've raised a family. Right. You've uh, done all your obligations, have a home, built a home, met an incredible woman. You've I'm sure you've had you had an ex. I think you have we yeah. didn't get into all that, so I'm yeah. sure you've been through the heartaches. I don't know if it was a oh, divorce yeah. or yeah. but you've been through that. Um, it's been a heck of a ride. Oh, it has been, yeah. Where are we going from here? I know we talked a little bit, but if you could, because we already nailed reinventing, but if, yeah. you, if you could perfectly pick a path right now, where would Nick be going right now? Well, perfect. I would definitely like to do um, something on television again, not necessarily network television, but I would like to do maybe a good streaming, good comedy, sort of a single camera edgy kind of fresh kind of something that could really be exciting you know i would like to i'd like to have that shot because i've developed a bunch of things and i feel like i've not really gotten my shot to really like really like shine i mean i've shined in a lot of ways but i'm like i think i deserve that chance i think a lot of people are like you know you've been kind of underappreciated under this i'm like i so i i think that next next round for me is maybe a really exciting comedy and then maybe some other exciting ventures like this looking for Italy thing other things that maybe directing I would like to direct something I've kind of dabbled with it uh, or producing something you know I mean I, I think uh, as be as creative as I can be and get like on a run you know I've been a little creative lately but I want to get on that run where I'm like I get in get in a real high again you know really, yeah. like really sort of like you know uh, you know what I'm saying? Like spin the, uh, spin it a little bit and, 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 and surprise some people too. You know, because yeah. like sometimes, you know, people like they forget like who you are, what you could do. And then, but, but I think the people on the street know. Yeah. They're like, yeah. you know, you're very, very talented. You're very this, you're very that. So I think the people know, but I, I think I, I'm definitely got, I got some gas in the tank. And uh, I want to do some, some stuff that will, definitely like you know not blow people's minds but you know bring some because i think there's a lot of stuff out there and it just doesn't excite me yeah it doesn't i'm like i know i could do it yeah, yeah i know i can do it just i just need the chance i just need the opportunity and maybe i have to create it somewhat but and and do it with people that you know are really talented really good writers really you know do it with where it's like wow this is this is worth doing you yeah. know this and people and get people to watch it would be great too, you know Absolutely. what I mean? Because it's like, today the audiences are like, it's hard, with all these places, it's hard to like. It's too many outlets. It's too many. People's attention People, span. They stink, you know, and it's like, you know, what are you doing, what have you done? Oh, I did this, this and that, oh, where is it? Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's like, I, I, I don't know, it's, it is a little bit frustrating, but um, I'm hopeful that uh, there'll be some, I think there's some things coming, I just don't know what it is, but sort of in that, in that area, in that area that I think um, uh, excites me, you know what I mean? So it sounds like um, you still got a lot of gas in the tank and that sounds like even with all the accomplishments, you still have a little more that you want to get out before you're ready to. Oh yeah, 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah. I think, you, you know, like, you still. I think I got a lot of fight in me, and I think, you know, a lot of guys, they get better with age, and I think in a lot of ways, I think the best is yet to come. I've done a lot of great stuff, a lot of good stuff, some bad stuff, you know. Uh, we've all done that, but I think I still got a lot more to do, and I think I want to, I think I could, you know, even surprise some people. Um, I, I just, I just feel like it's, it's definitely there from the years of knowledge, from the years of experience. You can't put a price tag. You can't buy that. You can't buy what I have inside me, what I've lived, what I've experienced. So I have all that, and I'm still, I'm still somebody coming from a real place. I'm not just Joe actor. You mm. know what I mean? I, I, I come from that kind of area. Mm. You know, a lot of these guys they're just actors, but I think I operate on a different level. I like real people. I like. I don't even like. You know, I don't even like a lot of actors and right. a lot of people in show but they're not my it's not my kind of people right. I'm, I'm just i'm more of a regular i look at myself as more of a regular blue collar guy I'm a, that's who i relate to i go to a baseball game i talk to everybody i enjoy that i, I enjoy being the man on the street yeah. i mean i enjoy being you know a people person you know people that can that's why a lot of people feel like they can talk to me they come yeah. up to me they're like they love to like and, and most people are good i mean you got a few knuckleheads you do you do. Yeah. I'm in social media. You know, I fool around. Territory. Yeah, I fool around with these people. A lot of people think, you know, they take it serious. It's like stupid. Yeah. Do you know me? Right. No, you don't know me. That's Twitter. Right. Yeah. You don't know me. That's pretend world. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know me. You don't. You don't. If you know me, then you could say, you don't really know me. It's like a, you know, I, it's like you don't know people. Do you know them? Yeah. And I know Adam Sandler too. I met him. I was like, oh wow, I got to really know Adam. You know, yeah. I got to know these people. I'm like. You don't know people till they let you in and you get to know them and you say, Wow, I never thought I'd me and him would even hit it off. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's absolutely. like But I I've I've always been just like a a regular guy and I think even like when you say, you know, all this stuff even happened to me, I was I always remembered I was always that kid from Queens. And I was like, and even Dennis Rodgers would say, yeah, you're a fish out of water, Nikki. <laughs> you you're just a, such a he knew it, you know, because he could tell I was just like that. I was just that kid from Queens, you know, I was, I was a doorman, then I was an actor, you know, I've lived a lot of different lives, I've, I've lived a few, you know, I've been on, I've been on both sides of the coin, yeah. so I, I get it, I understand, but when people see you, they're like, oh, wow, oh, wow, you know, yeah. it's funny how people, like, look at you, you know, like, oh, here's Brucey, hey, Bruce, and I'm like, I'm, I'm not Brucey, you know, I, I played Brucey, I'm like, they, they, they won't, they won't let it go, no, they no way, go, no, so, Brucey's like, like uh, yeah, yeah. the best. I know it's 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 amazing. Like twenty years, and it's like they still like. So I know I've been toying with the idea of like maybe a spinoff movie with him. Uh, this is young guy now trying to like you know he's like I, 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 trying to write something. I got to see what it looks like, but I think it could work because if you get to use the name and has such a big audience, kids would just click on. Yeah. So I mean Paramount owns it. So I mean. I mean, who knows? You never know. I mean, yeah. maybe Brucey could be a freaking smash. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when I mean, he gets out of jail. He gets out of jail. Where does he go? Does he coach Pee Wee football? What or, happens with his, his what wife? What happens with his wife and his gay lover? <laughs> I don't know. You know, I mean, he's got... It could be It could be very funny. Best, I think it could be great. I mean, Paramount... I mean, plus, I mean, what's it going to... I mean, it's it's got a huge audience. What's All he, he say? Do, Please let me make this yeah, kick yeah, and yeah, I'll Jesus stop Christ, you. Know. He goes, Please let me... Adam came up with that. Jesus oh, Christ, my Savior. Oh, my goodness. Man, and, uh, I swear I'll I know. stop. I, I had a hard time saying something. He used to say, make me say the most ridiculous things. But I was in a zone when I was doing it. So everything he could give me, I would just come and he goes, Hey, Nicky, I just wrote this. Fantastic. Hey, so when can quick. I play quarterback? Yeah, when can I play quarterback? Yeah. <laughs> I was all sitting, man. Hit me. That's why. Yeah, Shut yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Like, it's so, it's such a memorable role. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Great movie. Just, just the crack. Yeah, oh, Brucey's Bruce, getting mad now. And, you know, oh, it's great, I, I mean, man. It's it's um, it is kind of funny. I mean, it's just I I can't I can't I can't ever you know it's just it's on TV all the time. Right? No, it's, it's just, always it's, on. It's just like it's like it's like you know it's like never dies. And every time it comes on, I keep watching it. I mean, it's, it's funny. It's it's it's, it's it a classic funny. movie. Yeah, it's, funny. it's funny. It doesn't get old to me. It doesn't it's get hilarious. old, and it's it's enjoyable. Yeah. You know, there are some things you see a couple of times, and you're like, all right, I, even things that were good, I'm like, yeah, I have no interest to see that again. Yeah, that's one of the, one of those that you know you see it and then 
you always gonna you get stuck you, in it. You always get stuck in it. It's like, and it was a lot of fun doing it. It was really like eccentric, crazy bunch of people, rappers and football players and wrestlers and. Man, I almost busted my foot. Man, I fell off this guy's back. I did half of the movie. Like, I was like, I had a bone contusion. So, I mean, I think it helped with the character because my eyes were bugged out in it. You know, I kind of just went in there with a great haircut thinking I got a character. And then Sandler, like, just, you know, just like, just kept throwing the ball my way. It was like, it was amazing. He's just throwing it and just kept hitting it. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about comedy, man. You got to. You know, you got to be able to hit the ball, you know. And all you guys, the whole ensemble had it, man. Oh, it, it was, was like, it was like. But I was uh, just focused, man. I was like, I, I wasn't thinking like, when I think about it, I'm like, how did I shine amongst like a thousand people? Yeah, all of it's you pretty were good. like knocking yeah. it out. Yeah, I mean, and then there were a couple a of cast. really, really funny people, you know. Yeah. Really, I think that big guy that was on yeah, Estrogen. Terry, and Terry, I think. Terry was funny. Oh, yeah, the big yeah. dude on Estrogen. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. He yeah. was like, you know, sportsmanship in a, yeah. in a triad. In yeah. whatever. What's his name, too? Does um yeah. Cuban, Cuban. Yeah. But he, what, yeah, he didn't get to do that much in the movie. Yeah, but, but he uh, had some funny moments. Yeah, he had a couple like, of moments. Fat Tony. Diet Coke, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nobody, better, Coke. Better, nobody better cut me. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't have that <laughs> nobody much. Nobody better yeah. cut me. Yeah. <laughs> but those little, he had a few just moments. those little moments. He had a few. Um, yeah. All right. I, if hey, you can, Nick, I want you, I want you to... Hit the camera, and, and for people out there, give a, give them a message. Young people watching that are like, wow, look at this dude's been like, I mean, what a career. You know, maybe some young person out there. I don't know if they're young thinking about getting into acting or about anything. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have to be about acting, but I, what advice would you give them? I would just say any young person out there, whatever your passion is, whatever your, your interest is, I mean, whatever it might be, you know, follow follow that passion, follow your dream, listen to how you feel, and go for it, go after it, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be in the arts, it doesn't have to be, and not everybody's going to be interested in acting, but whatever it is, you know, if you got the talent, you got the passion for it, and the brains, and are willing to work, anything's possible. I mean, look at me, I was, I was a doorman, I was this, I was that, and then I wound up in having a successful career in Hollywood. I mean, you know, anything can happen if you want it to happen. If you see it, you visualize it, I think you could make it happen. You could will your way to uh, success. Uh, I still feel that way. I feel like, you know, when I see it, then I can, I can go for it. You know what I mean? So I just think that, you know, if you're inspired, listen to that. The people that inspire you, where you come from, you know what I mean? And you have to derive from somewhere. You can't just create it from, from nothing. So the family, it all starts with your family too. It all starts with, I always believe, like, where you're from, who you are. You know, you can't remember that. I'm a Totoro, so you can't take that away from me. I mean, Totoro's a wild bunch. You know what I mean? I just, I just, I'm, I mean, I think everybody's got their own story. Whatever that story is, tell it. Tell it, wear it. You know what I mean? I mean, not everybody has to be Nick Totoro, but you could be you. Just be you. I just me, that's all. So I'm just here to tell you anything's possible. After this huge career, I mean, this is an illustrious career in Hollywood. This is less than 1% of artists, actors that come into this town to make it, get a career like Nick's had. He's been very blessed with it, but he had a lot of hard work. He had the talent. It, it, it wasn't just given. But what I learned from it is even after all the years and the success, he's still hungry. He's still looking to reinvent himself. There's gas in the tank. I take a lot of inspiration from that, right? We're never too old. It's never over until our dying day. I always say that I want to do so many things in my life, try so many things that when I'm taking my last breath, I look up at God and I say, I'm ready. I'm exhausted. Let's go. Nick's an example of that. He's not done yet and he's reinventing himself. He's keeping the love life active and he's finding new inspiration and his creativity and he's open to trying new things so if you take anything i hope you took something like that that that's what i took from it nick thanks for coming on brother you, i really appreciate it yeah. man. it's an honor and i like the way you summed it up it yeah. was it was actually you know you, you you know like even when we met i was like ah, we had a certain unspoken thing that you know absolutely yeah absolutely and we're going to continue man i know okay. it man i really i really care about you and i really you're the real deal you invited me in your home when you didn't have to and not not for this podcast i'm talking about before yeah, yeah. so there was no reason to invite me in and you did and i always remember that man my pleasure hey everybody remember this is fy podcast finding your inspiration where we find our inspiration and we follow it tune in on the next episode thanks for joining us. you should never stress about the problems you'll be facing everybody in the mud on the struggle trying to make it Look into the mirror and you see the motivation Then you step into the world and you find your inspiration
I'm finding inspiration And once I get a hold of it, I'll never get complacent Look into the mirror and you see the motivation Then you step into the world and you find your inspiration